I'm sure many of you are familiar with Dylan Mulvaney, a prominent influencer who is documenting their journey into girlhood. Dylan Mulvaney, of course, is a biological male who has been undergoing surgeries and hormone treatments. I believe the only surgery so far has been facial feminization surgery, but they're reportedly taking hormones. Matt Walsh recently issued a public statement, a heartfelt message to Dylan Mulvaney, and it's resulted in widespread controversy and condemnation. Now, I will tell you my thoughts. Uh, I'll play some of this. I don't think Matt Walsh's uh, statements are are over the top. It is, uh, I would say, offensive probably to Dylan, but uh, uh, I'll play some of it because I want to talk about this. Dylan, if that is the most attractive you will ever look, then I don't even want to imagine what you'll look like when you're at your ugliest. You do not pass as a as an attractive woman or as a woman at all. Uh, even with 50 pounds of makeup and plastic surgery and clever lighting tricks, even then you still cannot escape what you really are and what you will always be. You have successfully shed whatever parts of you were masculine, perhaps, at least on the surface. Nobody would ever describe you as masculine or manly, so you've got that going. But your femininity quotient has not increased at a rate commensurate with the loss of your masculinity. Um, you may not be masculine, but you also aren't feminine. Instead, you are you are weird and artificial. You are manufactured and lifeless. You are unearthly and eerie. You are like some kind of human deep fake. That's what you are. You are a man deprived of all the best qualities of men, but without any of the best qualities of women. Even your personality is contrived. Everything about you is fake. Nothing about you rings true. Nobody buys the act. You'll never be accepted as a woman by anyone, never by anyone. Even the people who pretend to accept you as a woman are only pretending because they're afraid of being lectured if they don't, or because they want to use you as a platform to virtue signal. But everyone who looks at you will see something pitiable and bizarre, something utterly unfeminine in every way. You will never be able to actually have the identity that you're trying to appropriate, nor will you ever be able to fully escape the identity that you're fleeing. The best you can hope for is some kind of limbo, the worst of all worlds. And yet, even in that limbo state, you will still be a man. Just not one that any of us can respect or take seriously. But other than that, champ, you're doing great. This tweet has 12.4 million views. The video itself has 3 million views, and it is being talked about all over the place. And I will absolutely say, yeah, it's mean. Yeah, Matt Walsh is being mean. I mean, come on. Matt Walsh insults Dylan Mulvaney as eerie, weird, and and bizarre. You can get the point across without saying that. Now, in my view, Matt Walsh is allowed to be mean if he wants to be mean. And if you don't like it, well, then don't listen to Matt Walsh. But I'll tell you what I think about Dylan Mulvaney. I would not take the approach that Matt Walsh does because, yeah, I don't want people to... uh, hurt themselves or anything like that. And I, I do believe that Dylan Mulvaney is hurting himself. I don't believe that Dylan Mulvaney is, is actually trans. I believe Dylan Mulvaney is exploiting and mocking trans people. And we've had several guests on the show, Tim Castirel, who are trans, who have expressed similar views that Dylan Mulvaney is intentionally trying to deride and insult. Here's what I think. I think Dylan Mulvaney, and I'll say this again, is not trans. I think Dylan Mulvaney is chasing an algorithm for views and traffic, producing content that is absurdist and over the top because Dylan gets a response from it. The example after sight is the video where Dylan says, these are my hiking heels and running through a field in high heels, then pretending to get scared of a bug and falling over. This is not how trans women behave. It is not how women behave. This is an important thing I think conservatives need to hear as well. Dylan Mulvaney should not be seen as a representative or a, 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 of a trans of a trans person. We had Sarah Higdon on Timcast IRL the other day, and, and we talked quite a bit about this in the members only segment. People like Dylan Mulvaney are a caricature of women insulting them and at the same time making people not like trans people. I'll tell you what I think. If there is an individual who was born male or female and they are suffering from the DSM-5 labeled gender, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, DSM-5 labeled gender dysphoria. I want them to be happy and I want them to survive. I don't want anyone to hurt themselves. And so understanding that is very important. 
But people like Dylan Mulvaney, and there are many others, who pretend and go on social media acting a certain way are actually making it more difficult for gender dysphoric people to live a normal life to the best of their abilities. Because I will tell you this, to, to what Matt Walsh is saying, here's what I want to say. If he wants to be mean, he's allowed to be mean. Fine. Personally, I don't want to go that route. But this whole conversation about Dylan targets the idea of being trans as if Dylan represents trans people. And that's the problem I have with Dylan Mulvaney. Because you don't see trans people frolicking about doing these weird things. The left gets one thing right. They say trans people have been around for a long time and they've used whatever bathroom they wanted. And typically no one said anything. Agreed. I agree. The problem is when people like Dylan Mulvaney, who do not come off like a trans person, they come off like a character actor doing insane things like wearing heels. Can I just explain this? No trans person wears high heels in the woods. No woman wears high heels in the woods. I mean, maybe there's some anomalous individuals. And so what's happening is Dylan Mulvaney, who is intentionally trying to do a performance, is creating a negative depiction of trans women that then you will see people come out and say, this is what trans people are doing. Meanwhile, you'll meet people like Sarah Higdon or Blair White who aren't doing any of those things, who are minding their own business and trying to live their lives and then get flack over it. So I'll say this. I am not trying to be a middle of the road person on this one. I'm trying to make sure you understand. I think Dylan Mulvaney is a bad person. I think Dylan Mulvaney is engaging in these behaviors not because they're trans, because they see a path towards traffic and algorithmic adoration. That when Dylan Mulvaney puts on this caricature that insults and mocks trans women and women, they get views, they get clicks. Matt Walsh gets 12 million views saying Dylan Mulvaney's name. But what about any other trans person who's not famous? What about the trans people who are calling out this gender ideology and simply saying they suffer from gender dysphoria that causes them mental distress? Why should they be lumped in with narcissistic sociopaths like Dylan Mulvaney? They shouldn't. So the real critique that I think Matt Walsh should level at Dylan Mulvaney is not too dissimilar to what Matt Walsh said, but to point out to the audience that Dylan Mulvaney is just manipulating you for the TikTok algorithm. Now, I fear for the worst for Dylan because there will come a time where Dylan cannot generate any more social media hits and traffic through this path. And Dylan Mulvaney will eventually come to the point where Dylan will ask Dylan, what have I done to myself? Because Matt Walsh makes one thing. He says one thing. He says a lot of things that are correct. But Dylan Mulvaney does not look like a woman. Dylan Mulvaney is is not feminine in this. Dylan Mulvaney just looks like someone who got plastic surgery. And for what reason? You know, we were talking with Sarah Higdon, a trans woman, who pointed out that there are stories of Leah Thomas, the trans woman NAA, uh, NCAA swimmer, exposing their genitals in the women's room. And Sarah Higdon said a, a gender dysphoric person would not do that because that would trigger their dysphoria. They don't want people seeing that part of their, of their body. It's not the same thing. Dylan Mulvaney, I do not believe, is gender dysphoric. Because Dylan Mulvaney would not want to show off these masculine features and film it all for the world to see because that would trigger the dysphoria and the depression. At least that's what I'm told by actual trans women who aren't flaunting this and trying to get clicks from it. I think Dylan Mulvaney is just another narcissistic young person who has found a way to get traffic and views. And the media and the corporate press are eating it up. Don't get me wrong conservatives are as well. Seeing this as an excellent opportunity to accept, to, to attack what they view as the problems of gender ideology. I see something different. I see an individual in Dylan Mulvaney manipulating people for views who is insulting and mocking trans women and women. I think it's something that we need to pay attention to. Not everything is going to be true DSM dysphoria. It's going to be social contagion. And that's what Dylan Mulvaney represents narcissistic algorithm chasing. I'm sure there are many others that are just like it, but 
That's what I got to say on this video. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. And Coulter will be joining us tonight. I'm really excited for this. Should be fun. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.